Neverending Nightmare can be a traumatizing and very human game. The game's first few hours are an extremely well-composed dissection of the suffering caused by depression. In it, you play as Thomas, a man who's trapped by his anxieties, perpetually living out his own violent nightmares. And Thomas's dreams are horrifying. As an exercise, try to imagine the most horrific thing you can wrap your head around. Imagine morbidity incarnate, imagine bloodshed, sadness, pain. It's scary. It's the stuff our minds block out, the stuff that nightmares are made of. And it is exactly the kind of imagery that Neverending Nightmare uses to create a sense of fright, all of which is complemented by its crosshatch art style. Where Neverending Nightmare succeeds is in how well it uses grotesque imagery to turn Thomas from a silent protagonist or vessel into a real character. There's a motif of empty eyes. Wallpaper patterned by skulls and dolls with vacant eye sockets surround Thomas at every turn. We're told that dreams are the enemy of the guilty, and these lifeless eyes, silently watching, create a sense that you're being judged by the world around you. But it doesn't stop at the still and motionless dead. Warped memorabilia decorates the halls of Thomas's home, and mutated babies roam its corridors. There's a sense of past and future, and more importantly, a feeling that your presence has wronged those around you, failing the past and destroying its future. Thomas's world is so shattered, his psyche is caught between both homicidal and suicidal tendencies. Either way, he's looking for finality. Inside of Thomas's home, all of these elements come together with a surrealism that makes the dreams feel hellish but grounded. Even its homages to classic horror like The Shining, Silent Hill, or The Birds, coupled with the tropes of bad dreams, work to establish the realm of the nightmare. But where the game loses its tension and starts to feel tedious is in its second area, an asylum. Now, just to clarify, in concept, the mental institution is clever. Juxtaposed against the only other major setting in the game, Thomas's home, the psychiatric hospital symbolizes how Thomas's house has become his asylum, representing both his sense of self and how trapped he's become by his depression. The issue with the asylum is, to be blunt, just how cliché it is in execution. Where Thomas's house is filled with personal evidence of his shortcomings, or what he considers to be shortcomings, the mental hospital is filled with rotting corpses, walls smeared with bloody messages, and groaning zombie-esque lunatics who patrol the halls. Not only is it a less interesting area to explore, but by losing touch with reality, the game starts to feel more like a run-of-the-mill horror game than a dive into a man's tormented psyche. The problem with this is that with the exception of a few stealth sequences, Neverending Nightmare's gameplay is more or less about moving forward while the game's world is revealed to you. Without its dreamlike pace or psychological investigation, the game loses a big part of its appeal. Neverending Nightmare is a really interesting game, there's a lot to pick at. Some of its scenes are frightening as can be, and its use of color, black and white with a splash of red, is perfect. What I can't escape is the feeling that the game is really engaging when it's trying to tell you something, and decidedly not when it isn't. The first half of the game is so fascinating, but by its second half I felt like I'd already exhausted the symbolic possibilities that it was ready to disclose. After that I was waiting to watch the game's various endings so I could hear what else it had to say. 